Hi everyone. Today we're going to take a quick look at the statues of King Gudea, who ruled an independent city-state called Lagash around 2100 BCE in southern Mesopotamia. These statues are very, very similar to the early dynastic votive statues I looked at earlier this week, although Gudea's are far more standardised. They do, however, share probably the same purpose, that is to communicate between the, uh, the mortal dedicatee and the god to whom it's dedicated. Um, although the statues of Gudea also have an additional function, that is to publicize the piety of Gudea and his suitability to be king. So at least 20 of these statues were found at the modern site of Teltelo, or ancient Girsu, which was the center of the Lagash city-state. Their original context is unknown because they had been recovered and then uh, set up in a later, much later, 2nd cent century CE Seleucid palace um, by a different king. Um, and this palace incorporated the ruins of one of Gudea's temples. Um, it's very unlikely that these statues were meant to be viewed as they were found, that is, in a large group uh, with them all together. They were probably originally set up individually or maybe in pairs um, at different cultic settings. Um, and the statues them sh themselves show the king either standing or seated uh, in a long robe, um, sometimes either bold or with a woolen hat on. Um, one statue also, which is pretty cool, shows the king seated with um, a tablet on his lap um, and the outline of a temple inscribed on that tablet, which kind of implies that the king had a personal role in designing temples. Um, they're almost all made of diorite, which is an incredibly hard stone, and they have very, very detailed carving, especially on the hands. Um, but despite this, they retain the massive kind of block-like nature of the original stone. Uh, this could be a deliberate feature. Um, it could also just be a reflection of the difficulty that uh, the ancient stonemasons would have had in carving this incredibly hard rock. The inscriptions uh, record the deeds of the king, dedicate the statue to a specific god, and also describe the statue's purpose which is to speak to the god on behalf of the king. Um, it's also been argued that the standing and the seated statues had different purposes. Uh, in this period, uh, a seated individual generally has a much higher social status than a standing individual. Um, this is seen also on cylinder seals where the gods are seated and have standing uh, worshippers before them. Um, so it's been argued that the seated statues of Gudea were intended to be objects of worship, while the standing statues show the, God, uh, show the king as a worshipper himself and may have been set up before a cult statue of a god. Um, the statues were criticised by uh, modern Western audiences when they were first discovered as being uh, very unoriginal. They don't vary much in composition, um, the seated statues kind of look alike and all the standing statues look alike. Um, but scholars have argued that this is because each statue was actually intended to convey exactly the same message. So varying the composition of the statue would have got in the way of um, that message. Um, they're not portraits of in an individual king. Uh, they're actually statues symbolizing that king as an ideal ruler. Um, with certain features emphasised to enhance that message. Um, this was an argument made by a very famous art historian called Irene Winter. I'll put references to her work in the description. Um, but she argues that the physical appearance of the statues can be directly related to the Sumerian language. For example, the word for arm in Sumerian is a2, which can also be translated as strength or power and is used in compound verbs to mean things like to defeat. So it's a very, um, very physical, very um, important kind of range of meanings for rulers. Um, the Gudea statues just so happen to have really muscular emphasized arms. So by having that huge arm, um, the statues convey not only um, a sense of strength relating it to that word A2, um, but also the, the suitability of Gudea to rule as a strong king. 